I'd like to thank Pastor Howe again for getting me out of the terrible weather in Florida. <laughs> it was 75 degrees. Not a cloud in the sky. And I get to be up here like this. I have to go back, unfortunately, on Thursday. I've been coming to camp, if I figured it right, for 30 years or longer. While at the camp, I've had a great time with our young people. We have the best young people in all the world. They, they found out I only had two suits. When Carol Lee went to be with the Lord, she had over 200 outfits that I had to get rid of. I had 22 suits. And I downsized to where I only had two, uh, two suits, a brown one and a blue one. The young people somehow found out about it, so they took up a collection, collected over 300 and twenty dollars for this suit. It's the most expensive suit I've ever had. <laughs> Thank you young people, you're so good. In those 30 years of going to the BBA school camp, I've had a lot of precious memories. I'll review one of them. I think this happened maybe 12, 13 years ago. I was staying in the cabin with Pastor Howe and Pastor Aaron Wilson. Uh, Brother Wilson was, uh, I think, the youth pastor at that time, and Pastor Howe was our school principal. And I enjoyed the time with them, but I'm an old fogey. I, for many years, I've been the oldest person at BBA school camp. So I couldn't stay up as late as Pastor Wilson and Pastor Howe. I would usually go to bed before uh, midnight. <laughs> and sometimes they were later with the kids. This one night, uh, it was, I went to bed. It was about quarter to 12. And it was back when the cell phones, some of them had a walkie-talkie feature where you could press a button. Well, but one of them left their phone. I didn't know which one. And about midnight, there was a female voice that came on that said, uh, hot stuff, hot stuff, pick up. I couldn't go to sleep because who's hot stuff? <laughs> I thought probably hot stuff is Pastor Howe, he's so spiritual. <laughs> and then I roll over and, no, Pastor Wilson must be hot stuff. He's a good athlete. I roll over and about five minutes later there was, uh, the female voice came on again, said hot stuff, hot stuff, pick up. I said, surely, it must be Pastor Hal. He's got hair. <laughs> and then Pastor Hal and Pastor Wilson came to the cabin. <clears throat> and I found out that hot stuff was Pastor Wilson. It was Tina. Pastor Howe, I'm glad you're not hot stuff. <laughs> pastor Howe is great stuff. He's a great pastor. What I want to talk to you tonight about the touch of Jesus, how he touches us for salvation, and how he touches us for service. Take your Bibles, turn to Mark chapter 1, and we'll read verses 40 
to 45. That's the book of Mark, chapter 1, verses 40 to 45. And it says, And there came a leper to him, beseeching him, and kneeling down to him, and saying to him, If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand and touched him, and saith to him, I will be thou clean. As soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him, and he was cleansed. And he straightly charged him, and forthwith sent him away, and saith unto him, See thou say nothing to any man, but go thy way, show thyself to the priest, and offer for thy cleansing those things which Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. But he went out and began to publish it much and to blaze abroad the matter insomuch that Jesus could no more openly enter into the city but was without in desert places and they came to him from every quarter. What a wonderful picture of salvation. And it's all because of the touch of Jesus. No one touched a leper. So contagious. It was a sentence to die. In fact, the leper was not supposed to approach Jesus and come close to him. He was supposed to say, unclean, unclean, and be away from him. Aren't you glad that Jesus touched him? So the leper was saved. He was healed of leprosy and he was saved. This is a beautiful picture of salvation. And so leprosy, like today, all of us have sin. The wages of sin is death. I know that we all sin because we all die. But the touch of Jesus would save you. And, this, and an audience this large, there's possibly somebody here who's never been touched for salvation by Jesus. It's so easy. You can get saved right in your seat now. I had a friend saved on a stump out in the field by himself. All you have to do is ask Jesus to save you. All you have to do is say, Lord, I'm sorry for my sin. Please save me. I trust you. Take me to heaven when I die. And you can be saved right now if you're not. The Lord would bless you for that. <coughs> you know... Growing up, when I was five years old, from the time I was five to the time I was 15, my father was an alcoholic, addicted to alcohol. We had no family life particularly. Some people, when they drink, my dad used to drink a pint of 100 proof whiskey, that's 50% alcohol, a day, Monday through Friday. On Saturday and Sunday, he would drink a fifth. That's a fifth of a gallon, I think. <laughs> On Saturday and a fifth of a gallon. And when my dad drank, he got mean. Some people when they drink get happy and sing songs and love everybody, but not my father. He was belligerent. He was abusive physically even to my mother. I never invited any of my friends home from the time I was up to 15 because I didn't know how dad would be. I didn't want him to be mean and belligerent to my friends. I didn't want them, my friends to know he was an alcoholic even. <coughs> and
And so that was, that was our life, if you can call it a life. We were helpless, we were hopeless. On Friday nights, usually my mother would take me to either a friend or a family member so that we wouldn't be around dad, my father at that time. We would come home on Sunday evening. Typically, he'd be passed out on the floor. One <clears throat> Sunday evening, my mom and I came home. He, Dad wasn't there. And that was somewhat unusual. Monday morning, we got a telephone call. It was Dad. He was in jail. Now, he had been in jail several times because of his drinking and his fighting. And Mom and I went to the jail, and we hardly recognized my dad. His face was swollen big. His lip was busted from his nose right down. His shoulder was broken. His leg was injured. He could, limp, he could only walk with a limp. I said, Dad, wh what happened? I'd never known my father in his fights in the taverns to lose a fight. And he said, son, I got into a fight at the tavern, and uh, evidently the police were close by, and they came to the tavern, and I started fighting the police. Have you ever heard the country song, I fought the law and the law won? <laughs> Back in those days, there was no such thing as, br as police brutality. <laughs> the policemen, rightly so, I think they should have beat him up, used their nightsticks on him and they beat him to a pulp. That was in 1950. Let's, let's leave 1950. Let's go 20 years in the future, in 1970. I'd like to read you something written about my father in 1970. No, he didn't shoot somebody. <laughs> he wasn't in jail. <laughs> this is a yearbook from the Cincinnati Baptist Bible College. I'll read you something about my father. This yearbook is dedicated to Dr. Clarence Edwards, <laughs> a master teacher and friend. A student needs to look upon his teachers as being more than just teachers. He needs to look to them as being his friends. Dr. Clarence Edwards is just that, a teacher and a friend to all of his many students. Brother Edwards is truly an inspiration to everyone. Clarence Edwards always is willing to give 100% to all that he undertakes. It is quite an inspiration to sit under his teaching and guidance. Brother Edwards is always willing to help the students which are so close to his heart. His faithfulness, integrity, inspiration, and Christian love is evident in all that he does. For this, we are proud to dedicate the contender, uh, this yearbook, to a true man of God. Brother Clarence Edwards, a teacher, and a friend. Wow. What happened? <laughs> I'll tell you what happened. 
On February the 16th, 1953, there was a knock on the Edwards door at seven o'clock on a Monday, February 16th. No one ever came and knocked on our door. When we opened it, it was a co-worker of my father's who worked at Lunkenheimer Valve Company in Cincinnati, Ohio. And it was Earl Patton. Now Earl had been witnessing to my father for a number of years. But Dad put him off always and said, if I go into the church, it'll fall in on me. <laughs> he recognized his sin. <laughs> I thought Dad was going to throw him off the porch. <laughs> but my mom was more gracious. <clears throat> and so he came in with two young people my age, 15, 16 year old, from church, Central Baptist Church in Cincinnati inviting us, our family, to church. Just like Jesus touched the leper, he wants to touch people who are lost. My dad jumped up. <laughs> I thought he was going to hit him. But he put his finger under Earl's nose and says, Earl, if you... Stop bugging me about Jesus and coming to church. We'll be there this Sunday. And so on the 22nd of February, 1953, the Edwards family was in church for the first time. Preacher Norman H. Wells, great man of God, preached a gospel message on Acts, the 16th chapter, the Philippian jailer, remember that? When he and Silas, when Paul and Silas uh, were in jail, <laughs> uh, when my dad was familiar with jails. So when Paul and Silas uh, <laughs> heard the jailer say, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Paul and Silas said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. That day, the Edwards family house was saved. Amen. I was saved, my mom was saved, my dad was saved. Life changed completely. Why did that, how did that happen? The touch of Jesus for salvation. Isn't that great? <laughs> So, after just about a year, my, my, uh, my future father-in-law discipled uh, my mom and my dad and me. And they gave us one important thing. Whenever this church, they told us, whenever Central Baptist Church in Cincinnati, Walnut Hills section of Cincinnati, William Hard Taft and Kemper Lane. <laughs> Whenever this door is open to this church, you be here. And we were. And God touched my dad not only for salvation, he touched him for service. He quit his job. He became janitor of the Central Baptist Church, he and my mom so he could go to Cincinnati Baptist Bible College. He got a bachelor's degree, a master's degree in Greek and Hebrew, and he also uh, got a degree in evangelism. Besides being a professor at the, at the school, in the 60s, he started a church in Northbrook uh, suburb of Cincinnati. The first five years of that church, over 300 people were saved. A few years ago, I was teaching a class in Florida. I'm a wimp. I can't stand Michigan winters. And 
the pastor there had me at times teach the adult Sunday school class. I, and I taught a lesson. After the, the, the lesson, a man came to me. His name was Webb. He said, I'm Pastor Webb from Cincinnati. Uh, are you Clarence Edwards' son? I said, yes, sir. And he said, your dad taught me Greek and Hebrew at the Cincinnati Baptist College. I loved your dad. When I, be, when I uh, took my first pastorate, the first evangelistical service I had, I had your dad preach the service. How'd that happen? The touch of Jesus for salvation, the touch of Jesus for service. I'd like to review, you know, Carolee and I were married for nearly 60 years. And Jesus touched our lives for service. I'll give you a couple examples. In 1967, my, my wife, sweetheart, my, my Fluffy, I called her Fluffy. When we got married, she weighed 95 pounds. That wasn't a lot of fluff. But she got fluffier over the years. She did that to please me. Anyway, Fluffy came to me and said, sweetheart, and I said, yes, Fluffy. We got to go to Cincinnati. This was in 1967. I said, why? We were there not long ago. She said, uh, the Lord has laid it on my heart to go and witness to my school principal. His name was Mr. Shell, I C Shell. I said, okay, let's go. Now, Carolee, when she was a student at Lachlan High School in Cincinnati, she was well respected. The principal and everybody loved her. In fact, uh, she, she never wanted to talk about it, but I'll, I'll talk about it. She w finished number two in her high school senior class out of 80 students. That's, pr that's pretty good. She, she was sharp. Not only that, the students picked the class officers. She was a class officer all four years, secretary of the class. So her students loved her. The administration loved her. Mr. Shell loved her. And so we went to Cincinnati, and my sweetheart wife led him to the Lord. Amen. The touch of Jesus for service. Uh, last summer, when I was downsizing and getting ready to sell my house, I was cleaning out some drawers. And I found <coughs> her devotional, her daily devotional. For years, Carol Lee daily would write down her devotion filled with scripture, saying, uh, and also what she wanted, uh, she prayed to the Lord, Lord, what help me to to. Uh, do your service today. I cried when I read a lot of the things because when dementia took her mind and memory away from her, she was not able to, to continue with the journals. But that last journal was precious. I, I looked at one page and with all her scripture, and, and, and she, her notebook for her daily devotional was typically one or two pages of eight and a half by, by 11 sheets filled with scripture. At the end of one day, she wrote, Lord, lead me to someone today. 
that I can see saved. I, I flipped over the page, and the bottom of that page, it, she had written, Lord, thank you for leading me to that 15-year-old boy who was saved. Lord, you're so good to me. So how that happened? The touch of Jesus for service. In, at the end of October, I was uh, getting ready to go to Florida. And I had a message on my, on my cell phone. It was from Sherry Robinson. You remember Sherry? Well, I'll review with you. <laughs> <laughs> Sherry left a message saying, Brother Edwards, I was visiting today and I visited this Hispanic woman, and the Hispanic woman said, Is how's Carolee Edwards? And I told him, told her that she had died and is in heaven. And the Hispanic woman started cry crying. And here's what she said. Carolee Edwards led me to the Lord. And I loved her. And not only that, she was so hospitable to me. She had me in her house and, her fa and my family in her house several times. And I said, Lord, thank you for giving me such a great wife. And so the touch of Jesus in Carolee's life, the I'll give you just one example of the touch of Jesus in my life. And <laughs> when, when uh, I think this was in 1970, I was uh, at the Danville, I was senior engineer in process engineering at the Danville General Motors plant. And uh, at the plant there, the Lord had touched me to say, be a, be, be a better witness at work. And so I started witnessing at work more. I never witnessed on company time. GM didn't pay me <laughs> to be a witness, but I did witness at lunch break. And so one day, the Lord touched me for service. He said, and it was very clear, witness to this young engineer, sharp young guy named Ron Royalty. And I said, okay, and I did, and gave Ron the gospel. And he said, I just got saved not long ago, I, and he, he didn't, he was just a babe. He never had, I don't think he went to church or anything. So I said, brother, I said, brother Rye, I'll come, Carolee and I will I'll take you to the First Baptist Church in Danville, Illinois. He said, okay, okay, I'll go. So he and his wife, his wife's name, Jan, Kind of an interesting thing. Uh, his wife's maiden name was Poor. And he showed me a newspaper article that said, Poor becomes royalty. <laughs> That's what happens when Jesus saves us. Ron and his wife absorbed things of the Lord and God's word tremendously. Within a year, he quit his job at General Motors. He had a good potential. He, he was potentially uh, noted to be an executive for General Motors. He quit his job and he wanted to go into Christian full-time service 
a better future and a better job working for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And so he did. He went to Tennessee Temple. And at that time, uh, Dr. Lee Robertson was over, and it was a good school. I lost touch of, of, of Ron while he was at school. And uh, God, Carly and I always said God transfers us with GM. We never accepted a position or a promotion to move to another area unless there was a good church in that area that we knew ahead. My bosses knew that. So they always let me go and check it out before. And so uh, when, I, when, when God touched my heart for service, uh, we, we went to, to from uh, Danville, oh, oh, uh, Danville, Illinois, to Defiance, Ohio plant. And so I lost touch with Ron. And uh, I don't know, four or five, six years ago, I lose track of time. Older you get, like I said in the past, uh, things slip your mind. So anyway, this was several years ago. <laughs> At our church triumphant conference, I looked up and I saw this young, to, when you get in your 80s, everybody's young. And I, and I said, honey, Carly, is that Ron Royalty? And she said, I don't know for sure. So I made a point. Uh, back then, I was able to t help take up the offering. I'm old and feeble now. So anyway, I took up the I said, I'll go by the, that row and make sure it's, it's, brother, it's brother royalty. So I did. And when I got to him, the row in front, he looked up and saw me, and he hugged me. I'd never been hugged taking an offering before. <laughs> and he said, I want to talk with you after the service, and so we did. I said, Ron, let me know what, how your life has progressed. He said, Brother Edwards, he hugged me and said, thank you. He said, you started me out on the right path. Carly and I helped to, do, to disciple him. And years later, or even, I kept finding out things that God showed me that when he touched me and that Ron Royalty was discipled, wonderful things happened. All five of Ron's children are in full-time Christian service. His one son is pastor of a church, Baptist church, good church. Ron is a, was pastor of a church in Akron, Ohio, and been there for years. I found out that one of the daughters of Ron Royalty is a friend of uh, Mrs. Green. And I, and I think, didn't she have a positive influence about our church here? And so Mrs. Green came and be, was a teacher at our school, met her great husband. <laughs> he's a good athlete, too. He's, be, he's probably better than Pastor Wilson. <laughs> they were married and they're raising their children for the Lord. God let me see that. Another one of Ron Royalty's daughter and her husband felt called of the Lord to be missionaries. And they went to the land of Cambodia. And they were working for the Rupals until uh, Brother Royalty's daughter, husband, 
had a serious health issue and had to come back to the state. Oh, I found out when we had Brother Sixtad, our missionary, at our church. I was with him, and I, and I asked him, tell me about your salvation story. Brother Sixtad said, I was led to the Lord <laughs> by Ron Royalty. And Brother Sixtad came here to our church on furlough, preached to our young people, and Brother Nick Coral was touched by that and is at West Coast Bible College studying to be a servant of the Lord. All that happened because of the touch of Jesus touched me for service for the Lord. So, how do we get the touch of Jesus for service after we're saved? You have to be like the leper. The leper came close to Jesus so he could be touched. We have to be close to Jesus if we want to touch, be touched by him so we can do service for him. How can we get close to Jesus? Just There's two ways. There's probably many ways, but two ways I want to talk about. We got to read God's word more. That's, t that's God talking to us. About 30 some years ago, Pastor Ouellette challenged our church to read God's word consistently every day. Carly and I read God's word, of course, but we made a we made a commitment to the Lord that we would read God's word through every year. And we both did. Thank you, Pastor Willette. <laughs> because reading God's word has helped me be a better husband, a better father, a better grandfather. And so a better servant of the Lord because it helps me to be closer to God where he can touch me for service. And so, I have to tell you this. Carolee, in the last year and a half or so, her memory was completely gone. She did not remember past, she did not remember present. The only thing she could do was feed herself, and that was a blessing. I didn't have to feed her. Everything else I did for her. But there's one thing. <laughs> Whenever I quoted scripture with us, she could quote better than me. She would correct me. <laughs> you know why that was? I came to the conclusion. It was because she read God's word so much, it wasn't up here. It was down here. So she could be touched by Jesus, she was close to him. How else can we get close to Jesus? We can pray. That's, that's us talking to God, reading his word. You know, in any relationship, the, it's vitally important for communication. If you want to be close to someone, communicate with them. 
And so that's what happens when we read God's word, God talking to us. When we pray, we talk to God. A few, about 25 years ago, Carolee came to me. <laughs> she said, men, she said, you and all men pray for big things, but you do not pray for little things. And I said, well, what should we do? He, she, said, she said, I want to teach you something. I said, okay. You, you know, when you're married, you should help each other spiritually. And so I helped her in some areas, and she helped me in some areas. And she, I said, well, what should we do? She said, I'm going to pray. Now, you're in the process of building a house for your daughter and son-in-law and family. Let's pray that God will give them a big, good well, a lot of good water. I said, okay. And so we started praying for that. And so when it was time to dig the well, Carly and I were over there the day that the well diggers came and, and, and started drilling. We were in the kitchen uh, <clears throat> beside, uh, there was, we had a deck out and we heard this loud noise and we went out to the deck. Lo and behold, the well digger had struck an artesian well. 500 gallons a minute, 100 feet in the air. <laughs> Carly looked at me <laughs> and said, see what happens when you pray for little things? Not only that, years later, at t the, the, the well digger didn't know what to do. He had to call his father, who was more experienced and had started the business. And he came and he did some things and got it down to 10 gallons a minute. That's still a lot of water. So several years later, we were, I was able to, I read up on it, to have a geothermal system that heats their house and cools their house at low cost. All that happened because Carolee taught me to pray for little things. If you and I want to get close to God, read our Bibles consistently more every day. Pray to God every day for big things for little things. And you can be close to God where you can be touched by Jesus where you can do service for him. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for saving us. Lord, my family wasn't a good prospect. Just like the leper was touched by Jesus, Thank you, Lord, for touching me and my family and Carolee. Lord, you're so good to us. You save us and give us so many wonderful benefits. Help us, Lord, to be close to you in all that we do. Help us to read your word more and to pray more and help us to lift up Jesus in our lives. And Lord, uh, we claim that you will draw men and women, boys and girls, to yourself. Thank you, Lord. You're so good to us. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen.